my gosh, I just think that this is so hilarious. The last McDonald's cheeseburger that was sold in Iceland before McDonald's closed down back in 2009. So this cheeseburger and french fry combo was preserved since, 2000, oh, since 2009, a decade ago for this here. Still here. The Iceland plane crash on Soheima Sander Black Sand Beach is where man-made and natural elements combine to create an impressive landscape. Back in 1973, the DC-3 US Navy plane was said to have run out of fuel, eventually crashing on the Soheima Sander Beach in South Iceland. Thankfully, everyone survived the crash. The crew took everything of value with them, but it was decided that it was not worth the effort to recover the plane, so the body of the plane was abandoned and it remains on the beach today, four decades later. This is the cool plane! It's just literally left out in the middle of the field, like this. This is the second time exploring abandoned planes. If you guys remember, the very first vlog I've ever did is from the th abandoned graveyard in Thailand. So it's really surreal to also be exploring this in the middle of Iceland now. Actually, the head just torn right off. What? It's missing right there. Look how the mountains are just in the background like that. Right behind through there, right behind this waterfall. And I can already feel the mist of it. So I'm not sure how wet I'll get. Look at that! Ah. So cool that I'm right behind a waterfall. What? It's like a whole secret world and like behind this and then the reality world that's out there. You can see the sun out there behind here. Just all of this. Down the road 
for the major waterfall that we were just at is another one that not many people know of but this one is actually has its own characteristics too because it comes jutting out of the rock and so we're gonna see it here but there's a little canyon that we're gonna be walking through to go to see the waterfall so it's inside a canyon This one you think, have you seen it all? Right? Wow. We are inside this canyon, soaking wet, with this glorious, glorious waterfall right in front of us. It's truly just incredible. Are you just looking up, you see that. You're just about to get into the canyon and it's hectic because you're all wet but you can see the fountain of the waterfall. Any respectable road trip, you would have snacks. And the cheapest way to get snacks for your road trip or any food in Iceland is to go to Bonus. The pig coon kind of looks a little drunk, doesn't it? I love how all of this is just lamb from all the sheep that you see grazing in the field. Got enough uh, chocolate there. No, you're right, I'll take the whole bottle. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally what a road trip snack consists of. We're off to see a crater that was formed over 6,500 years ago called the Kiriyat. And the Kiriyat is actually drum rolls please right damn it what do we do hikes and climbs after gorging on chocolate and chips in the car on a road trip well i guess this exercise offsets all those calories all along the crater's rim, which we are about to do now, we look into this crystal clear pool. Wow. And you can go all the way straight up to the edge as well. Look, there's no gates or anything. Quite scary actually. This is the only glacier in Iceland that you can walk all the way really up close to and still touch. I mean, you still, if you want to walk on top of it and do glacier walking, you still need to get your glacier boots and your ice boots. But if you're just wearing normal sneakers, like more, you can still go all the way up and touch it. <laughs> it's a tough uh, one to 
famous volcanoes. That when explains all this black ash around us. 2010, yeah. there was a big ash cloud coming from this volcano. Which from up here? Yeah, which disrupted wow. the flights above Iceland. Okay. Uh, so also the routes between North America and Europe for weeks. What? So that's almost a decade ago when that happened. The volcano? Oh, the glacier. This is the glacier? It's so black. Ah, oh, okay. That's cool. Can't believe we're actually on this glacier. Wow. The tree climbing up this glacier right now. To be so steady, so slippery, so much. Just going as far as we can, of course, in our normal shoes. Look. Is it slippery? Yes. Oh, are you trying to look like an explorer? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's good that you're gonna mute this. <laughs> or at least now you are. <laughs> like an. Antarctica. Yeah, not like Indiana Jones now, is it? No. no. He never did an ice expedition. Uh, shameful. Shame. <sighs> Shame. 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 You want to say that again? No. Because I said shame in between it. I'm going to go now. Made it? Did you make it? Bye. Oh, don't fall again. <laughs> Those are the type of shoes you need. <laughs> Not that juice. <laughs> Ooh, that's why. That's a good thing. They're just right there in the nook of this rock that's in front of these mountains. And they look like little old hobbit houses. You guys will see what I'm talking about once we get much closer. Look at how beautiful this area is. And there's this shed that is built into this rock itself. It's very cool. The room is walking up. Peeking inside of it. You have to put your head in. Whoa! This is what I meant by Hobbit houses. But it's actually quite spacious inside, and I can see how this will protect you quite well in the winter, actually. I don't feel any wind at all. And it's made out of stones all around, and then the wood to hold up more pieces of rocks up to be made as the ceiling. See more of them right here and they're built with this beautiful grass that just overgrown on top all around the houses. 